Good afternoon. We will be dissecting a soil worm today, Phylum Anelida. And what we have here are two giant night crawlers, called night crawlers because they often come out at night, and pretty large worms. I'm here with two special hel helpers. Jack, can you introduce yourself? Jack. And the other one? Charlie. Charlie. Uh, they're here to, here to help me learn about earthworms. If you want to, you can, uh, you can feel these worms. What do they feel like? They feel pretty dry. They feel dry? Mm -hmm. Well, you have the glove on. Do you feel anything pokey on it? If you rub, rub your finger across it? They have little ridges. They yeah, ridges. little ridges. Yeah, so we see these individual segments here. These are individual segments called um, metamers. So these are metameric organisms. And Charlie, what did you feel when you when you rubbed your hand across it? Did it feel a little spiky? Yeah, so if you r look really closely, which you can't see here, but there are little um, seti on every segment. They have paired epidermal seti. So what they're uh, what they use those for is anchoring into the sediment. So as they as they move, they'll stick their little hairs into the sediment, and that prevents a bird or something from pulling them out of the soil. Yeah. What else What else do you see about these guys? I know that from wild crats. You know that from wild crats? Yeah. What do you notice about these creatures? They. I know that um, the part that has that little ring is the uh, front. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if we know anterior from posterior, we're going to identify this structure here. This is called the clitellum. I know about worms in the out at night. Yes, worms come out at night. Yeah, this clitellum is kind. Of, it comes from a word that means saddle, so it kind of looks like a little saddle on the earthworm. Could you ride that little saddle, Charlie? <laughs> Could you ride an earthworm, like a horse? <laughs> no. If, it, if that worm was giant, I could. If it was a giant worm. Yeah, so this clitellum secretes... Or if I was tiny. Yeah, you're, you're, well, you are kind of tiny. <laughs> so this, uh, this clitellum secretes the eventual egg case and helps during mating. I'm tiny, too. You are tiny, too. You're almost as tiny as these earthworms. And so anterior from posterior, we know that the anterior, the head, is closest to the clitellum. We can also tell dorsal from ventral, top from bottom, based on the clitellum as well. So if we look at uh, the ventral side is going to be flat, and the dorsal side is going to have a more curve, and it's going to be more I obvious I clitellum. Those are scissors. And there's two ways you can tell from the, the back and the front. The okay. back doesn't have the clitellum, and it's thinner. This is fatter. Yeah, it does look a little fatter. Yeah, good noticing. Charlie, we're not going to play with the scissors. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to see the, the what we're going to talk about, the external anatomy, and then we'll cut them open and see what it's like inside. What do you think you're going to see inside? It's yeah. guts. <laughs> it's guts. Charlie, what do earthworms eat? Uh, bulls. Birds? They birds eat, <laughs> eat worms. Birds eat worms, and worms eat what, Jack? Dirt. Dirt, yes. So they're going to ingest dirt, um, filter it for all the organic nutrients, and then um, excrete it out the anus back here. So they have a complete digestive system. Up here they have a little little head. If you remember on annelids, the very first segment on annelids is called the peristomium. And in marine worms, this is really elongate, and it has some palps and maybe some tentacles coming off it. But in soil worms, it's just a little nub called the peristomium. The mouth is on the ventral side right here. You can't really see it, but it's, it's very, very small. And so it's kind of protected by this fleshy peristomium. And then um, each of these, we can, we can count these segments. And the clitellum is always going to occur at the, the same, same segment. But I forget which segment that is. Let's count it. So we have, Jack, help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So about the third, between the 30 and 33rd segment, depending on how well we counted that. And so again, the, the snap morphies of Anelida are these metameres, these individual segments, and then the paired epidermal seti that come out of there. And the external morphology is pretty easy. We need to identify the clitellum, which secretes the cocoon, and the peristomium, which is the first segment, and the anus back here. And we need to know anterior from posterior, and we need to know dorsal from ventral. So Jack, is this anterior or posterior? Anterior. Is this anterior or posterior? Posterior. What is this called? The clitellum. Clitellum, yes. Clitellum. And what is the function of the clitellum? It's on the front. It is on the front, yeah. Do you remember what it, what it does? It secretes a cocoon for the egg case. So this makes a cocoon for the egg case. And if you look, is this dorsal or ventral? Ventral. Is this dorsal or ventral? So, so you see this is flatter? Dorsal. So the flatter one is ventral. Ventral means um, underneath. It's where they're going to be crawling on. So the underneath part is smooth. The other side is kind of curved and rounded. So this is dorsal. This is ventral. Let's look at their insides. What we're going to do, mainly all the good stuff is going to be anterior to the clitellum. So we're really only going to look at this section here. To do that, we're going to use a little needle little pokey thing to anchor it to the substrate and we're not going we're not going to anchor it right in the middle because down the midline is where all the good stuff is so we're going to kind of put it to the side anchor it in firmly there and then we'll go a little bit down past the clitellum and also before I do that Remember ventral and dorsal, we're going to put it on its ventral side until the dorsal side is up and then anchor it down and again here and now we're going to slice it open if we can. To do that we can use scissors or a scalpel and we don't want to cut through the intestines so we're going to start pretty slowly and gently. And you see this kind of sh shimmery, shiny thing coming off here? Mm -hmm. That is the cuticle. In earthworms, it's, it's secreted by the epidermis, but it's not hard like it is on insects. But they still have a, um, don't lean on this bud. They still have an outer tissue layer covering. So we're going to slice down an exoskeleton. Yeah, the insects have the exoskeleton, yeah. And then we'll slowly peek inside. And what we see, we're going to see a lot of transverse membranes. Oh, squished his gut. James. Guess what? You know James mm -hmm. in Preford? Mm -hmm. He actually told me that worms have ten hearts. So ten hearts? Well, even if they break, they're still alive. Let's check that out. We'll see how many how many hearts they have. Alright, so we're going to slice it open, and then we're going to use these little pins to pull it open. And we're going to make sure we slice through the top, because there are things at the very top we want. So we have, we have a nice slice, and what we're going to do internally, there are septa that divide the individual segments. And so you can take a scalpel or the, the pin and just kind of scrape along the inside, kind of break open those membranes. And see these kind of bulbous things here? That's part of the reproductive system, so we don't want to mess those up too much. And if you go a little ways, put another pin in it, and then keep going very gently on down. Can't see that. I will move my hand in a minute. Charlie, can you see? No. Alright, now we have one side done. We're gonna 
We're going to do the other side. So Jack, you'll be able to see here. So we're going to prop him open like that. And now we can we can see more clearly the stuff going on. I'm going to take the scalpel and go right under right under the skin like I'm skinning it. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. What is all that stuff? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't like right there. In that middle part right there. Doesn't it kind of look like he has bones? Yeah, they do kind of look like bones. But they're actually not because not bones, bones right? don't have bones. That's right. So we need to point out that these uh, these little transverse lines you see here, those are the septa that divide the individual segments from each other. We can go outside later, buddy. No, no, and the worms. You want to find real worms outside? Yeah. That would be fun. No, I need real worms. Those are real worms. They're just dead. No real worms that will die. No real worms. Real worms. Real worms and real fish? Yeah. And real nails. Real fish? Find real fish. Okay, now it looks a little strange on the inside. Everything's all compressed in there. But remember these are just tubes within tubes. Yeah. Tubes within tubes, right Charlie? Yeah. Yuck. Do you want to eat this for a snack? Nope. Yeah. I want a snack. You want a snack now? We'll get a snack in a minute. All right, so this is how your dissection should look. Bring it up a little bit closer. So you should be able to see the transverse sections, which are the septa. And along the midline, you're going to have the digestive system. And then we see these guys. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's kind of the most obvious thing on the, on the earthworm. In digestive systems, you guys are familiar with these. We have a mouth, and then posterior to the mouth, we'll have a pharynx. This right here, this section right here, is the pharynx. And then we need a place to store food and a place to grind food, to mechanically digest food. So what we're going to see is that there are two bulges down here, one here and kind of separated by right here. Oh, I just punctured it. But what you see at the top is the crop, and here is the gizzard. If you press the gizzard, you will notice that it's, it's highly muscular. So this is the place where mechanical digestion occurs. The crop, just anterior to the gizzard, is for storage. So mouth, pharynx, crop, gizzard. Ingest food, transports food down to the crop. The crop stores the food, the gizzard grinds the food, M muscular contractions mechanical digestion. So mouth, pharynx, crop, gizzard. These large things here, these are going to be part of the male reproductive system. These are the testes. And worms are monaceous, so they're going to have both male and female parts. So actually before I get to the reproductive system, I want to point out these, these dark black things right here. They kind of look like almost worms within the worms. This right here will go into focus. This is an aortic arch. And so worms have multiple hearts or aortic arches. They have a closed circulatory system. And these are going to be covering, kind of surrounding their upper digestive system back and forth right here. So all these dark things are their aortic arches. 
the largest, most obvious part of the reproductive system of the earthworms are the testes. They're going to be on either side of the digestive system, this large kind of tan tissue right here. And then back here, we have two almost circular things right here. These are seminal receptacles. These will receive the sperm from the, the mate during reproduction. The ovaries are going to be below here, and they're going to be really too small to see um, very well with, with this, uh, this camera. So no, the, the testes produce and store sperm. The seminal receptacles receive sperm from, from the other mate. And for this dissection, at least, uh, that's, that's all we need to know. So mouth, pharynx, crop, gizzard, testes, seminal receptacle, know the clitellum and the metamers, the segments, and that they have paired epidermal seti. Know the first segment is the peristomium and be able to pro provide functions of everything. So um, if, you, if you are able to trace food from outside, through the digestive system back to outside, that'll be great. So the mouth ingests the food, the pharynx transports the food to the crop, which stores the food, and the gizzard grinds the food, and then the intestines are gonna absorb the nutrients. And the intestines um, run the length of the worm, and then the anus expels the, the food, or the undigested material. So there's, there's the earthworm. You should be able to, I should be able to point to anything here from the pharynx to the gizzard to the testes to the seminal receptacle and you should be able to tell me what it is.